podcast is part of the No Phony Podcast Network, the home of independent awesomeness. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of On the Road with Jim and Casey. Joining me, as always, James Morganti. That's right. So, uh, I've heard that you've been getting some comments. People are wondering exactly what I do for the show. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Correct. So I want to let everybody know, all of our listeners, the thousands and thousands of listeners that we have now. Now. Thank you. If it, if it weren't for me, Casey, in the situation of Jim and Casey, there would be no on the road. Really? He, yeah. Who pays for the publishing? Who edits? Who uploads everything? Who gets all the guests? Uh, who I got? Who, uh, who did I get? One um, guest. And it was I'm a good one. On I got to say, you got our number one listen to show, Larry Gators, The Bishop. And I thank you for that. But I, Casey Shearer, do all the work for the show. And I want to let everybody know that. Can I, why don't we let, you know what? I want the viewers to know something too. Number one, when we were on the road, all Casey does is just, I, I was there helping him the whole time through his <laughs> editing, through all of his editing that he's doing. I have video of you helping me with the editing while you're passed out in the bed because you were too, you know. Tired. Tired. And, uh, yeah. And who's the man? Who's the man that stays up all night and edits the podcast while you get your little Betty pie and have your dippy eggs in the morning? That's what, okay. All right. Okay, and wake you know up what? at God knows what time. If it weren't for me, when we were on the road, you'd probably still be sleeping. Yeah. Can I tell everybody that K this is how Casey sleeps? You fall bed, uh, you fall asleep, and when he's in the bed neck, you're sleeping. Next thing I know, all right, you ready? Let's go. And it's three in the morning. Man, this guy, um, he has good work. work to be done. I, I got to admit, you have, you have good work ethic. Okay. There's work to be done. I don't have time to sleep and rest and get dippy eggs and enjoy life. Right. I got work to do. All right, we'll come up with we'll come up with a negotiation. From now on, I'll let you do all that editing and stuff. If you cannot wait a minute, if all right, no more. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's America. We can make fun of whoever we want. I get it. You can make fun of Jesus, technically. Uh, we're legally allowed to blaspheme our Lord and Savior and Creator. I know. I get it. I mean, I know how some people think it's cool and uh, it's so great. Stop. I want to tell you. Stop. I want to tell you. If you look at that post, it's not really making fun of Jesus in any way. Really? It's making fun of people who don't believe that you should wear masks. It's showing his soft because when people go to what? when people die they go to heaven and if you don't wear a mask you die. Oh, you do, don't you? Well, when we were selling our masks, my motto for the mask, which you didn't want to be a part of, was, "Don't kill someone, wear the mask." So now you're admitting it, which you said Casey Shear has no uh, has does not have the same views as Jim Morgani does on the podcast okay so from now on anytime somebody comes in to you know to t come on the show and they want to talk about global warming and and uh how great it is uh hating jesus and uh loving satan and we we love you know uh pedophiles don't exist in the government it's fake it, they don't exist she got arrested for having you know just being gizlane maxwell we can have them on but you get to make fun of Jesus. Wow. Okay. Just right. explain to you. 
You weren't listening. Again, I just explained to you. It wasn't making fun of Jesus in any way. All right. Okay. Jesus was in heaven where he should be, where he's supposed to be, where you claim he is. Uh, you know. The myth okay, of I, Jesus. I, okay. You know what? Maybe. All right. The, since we're coming clear now, <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe it's time that I admit on, on, on air that, yes, I think my purpose, God needs me to be here in this podcast to save you with the love of Jesus. And I can't wait until God fills your heart with love. You're going to be like, oh, wow, I'm so, oh, I'm so happy. I Here's can't wait. Thing. Here's the thing. I don't need Jesus to be happy. Oh, I don't yeah. Need, right. I don't need a fictional character to tell me about being happy and to be a good person. I'm a good person because I, I'm a good person, not because I believe in a fictional character. Well, I mean, you know, yes, you no, know, Casey is a very good per person. He, um, uh, he, he's good. Big risk. And a lot of, and I want to clear Rips. something else up. A lot of times, why I'm so quiet on the show is because I don't know what you guys are talking about, and I don't, maybe, and I do my research. Maybe if you read your Bible, because I'm gonna, cause I'm gonna unload on you one day about the whole <laughs> fictional myth of Jesus. It's oh, gonna, really? I mean, it's I'm gonna blow your mind because I'm going down. Deep, deep rabbit holes, brother. I can't wait until Jesus fills your heart with love and freedom. And and you're going to be like, oh, my, oh, you won't even be able to take it. What are you, you getting? I don't need that. I already have all that. I'm already yeah. filled with love and whatever the fuck else you just said because I wasn't listening. <laughs> and the doctor is here. So joining us today, Dr. Eddie N. Graves author of demons nephilim and angels hello sir how are you i'm blessed how are you very good sir we already did a little intro so uh let's just get right into it okay tell us, tell us a little bit about yourself well i am a traveling minister and an author i've written three books i'm invited on radio stations and get to give interviews but i'd also like to give insight on what's going on in these last time days so i like my job is to expose the kingdom of darkness, but also to enlighten people about the love of Jesus at the same time. Awesome. Um, it's a pleasure to have you on, uh, Eddie. And I, okay, so for the viewer, I mean, we've talked about this many times on the show. For the most basic person to get them ca caught up to date, because I've, I've dove so far down. I mean, how can you not read Genesis and Book of Enoch and you know all that the book of giants jasher yasher uh, you know whatever people uh however you pronounce it um when so let's start from the beginning okay so that way all the occultists and the cool girls that are into the new age stuff and they're all like you know uh course of miracles and all that let's get there telling people where the spirits and ghosts and everything that we see now today that are roaming. Let's start from the beginning with how the Nephilim came, uh, because I, I, your book, uh, the the Nephilim, the demons of Nephilim. Um, I mean, I we, we could talk about it all, all day, but like I just want to start for, from the beginning for the viewers that are like, what, what, where do ghosts come from? You know, like that might not know this, and you know, and you probably know more about it than I do. So. No, it's a pleasure to, uh, to be on your show and a pleasure to meet you as well. Um, uh, well, it all, it all started in Genesis 1-1, but we're going to start a little bit later than that because that explains the Nephilim a little better. So what happened in Genesis chapter 6 was there were these beings called watchers. Now, I don't like to say angels because people get in their mind and think of um, beings with wings and you can put your hands through them. I don't want them to get that in their, in their visual. So these are a special type of creation. They're watchers. They have the ability to reproduce. They're somewhere between flesh and spirit. Hard to explain, hard to describe, but they are a special class of angels, which is why it angered the Lord um, greatly in what they did. So they came down to earth, and they were supposed to be watching over and protecting uh, mad mankind and they got they saw these women and they thought they were beautiful and they got aroused and enticed and they wanted to make sure they left their seed on the earth so they got together and concocted a plan these these angels 
behind God's back, they, so they thought. Um, and this is where the whole oath thing starts with the secret societies where they take oaths. In the book of Enoch, it says they took an oath to yes. come down and do this. So this is where the whole oath thing started. And, uh, and not to cut you off, um, mm -hmm. it's so much, the, how they spoke back then, because they made a pact. They're like, all right, guys, we're, we're all going down together to do that. But also, when Enoch was taken, not to get off topic, he would say that the stars operate by oaths to each other. Like, they're oaths. Instead of the laws of physics, they are operated by oath. And I thought that was very interesting. Uh, and that some stars are prisons for angels. They're not really stars. That there might be a... Uh, the, 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 the uh, outer space is just a blanket of darkness blocking the actual light of God, I think, and those poke holes in it. That's another story. But, right. uh, okay, yes, continue about the Gregory or the uh, Watchers. Yes. And um, just not to get off subject, but the thing about an oath is um, you can break an oath. So it's telling us that all of God's creation has free will, whether or not to serve him and to do what they were, they were created to do. Great point. Yes. The, it, that's their choice so um well they took this oath um, like you said they knew they were going to go down so but they didn't they didn't care because um they didn't think that what god did that he was going they never expected him to do what he did so he caught them off guard with that so they came into these women um and they bore children and these children were born as giants now i like to think about these watchers as i know the book of enoch talks about how, how tall and these giants were, and we know there's, there, there's bones, there's evidence, fossils that you can see of actual beings that were 30, 40, 50 feet tall. Um, science doesn't, doesn't deny that. Um, but um, these watchers, if you've ever seen the movie um, Percy, Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief, where in no. the beginning, oh, okay, where in the beginning there's like um, a, a per, Pegasus, a, a Poseidon, and he's a huge giant. He's walking, you can see him walking in the water like a, the ocean. And it's like up to his ankles. But he wants to talk to his son. All of a sudden, he just shrinks down to a regular human. And I kind of think that's how these watches were. They had the ability to, to be super huge and tall. But when they wanted to, they can um, change their, 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 um, their, 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 their uh, condition. Like yeah. in the Bible, it talks about um, Satan being transformed. That just means to change your external condition. Well, anyhow, um, they... Had, had, had sex with these women and they bore children. These children were, were giants. Um, and not only were they giants, they were um, tyrants and bullies and um, evil. Um, after a while, the Book of Enoch refers to this. Not only did they um, mix their seed with women, they mixed their seed with animals and plants. Plants, I guess anything that has DNA can, have their, um, can be compromised, which is, I know, hard to believe, but they corrupted everything that was walking the earth. So you get those the um the spurs and all that and it's part man part horse and there was all kind of crazy mixtures because the earth was polluted with that and um not to mention all the per perverseness that was going on too there was plenty of homosexuality plenty of everything that's going on today was going on in those days because when the bible says um it was perverse that's one of the things it mentions no morals everybody's morality was was gone so god had enough and he sent the flood now when the flood came it killed these beings um, they're physically, but since they were a special class, they still their spirits were still alive, but they had their spirits had nowhere to go. So their spirits were roaming the earth after the flood, looking for someone or some DNA to connect to the world and be affect the earth. And those are the devil and the ghost of today. Yeah, uh, we lost you for a second there. But oh. yes, um, uh, but but I I think all, all that cut off was when you were saying how they were cursed to earth, the spirits of them, uh, the sp the the because uh, the, they're they are spiritual, but they can also transform themselves. But but God said after the um, after the flood happened, or not uh, when he saw the abominations, and he and he flooded, he's like you're cursed to earth forever. Oh, okay. I, I could. I your 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 camera's frozen. Yes, the spirits of the bit. dead. Yes. The, the, the spirits of the dead Nephilim are the uh -oh. spirits that we see right now roaming around. Which everyone who's anyone that that doesn't. I know there's a ton of people that don't believe in God. They don't believe Jesus was real. They think he's a myth. Uh, they'll post memes about him. You know, they th there's 
uh, uh, they're all like, whoa, yeah, but spirits are real. Yeah, that's real. But it was, that's what they said. It, it's like, you know, like, yeah, it was all in there. You know what I mean? Like, of course they're real. It's all real. Exactly. And just imagine they, now they're just spirit. They don't have a physical body so at all. They cannot manifest a physical body. So they have to find a person that's willing to open themselves up to um, like an oath or a secret society for them to be able to not only maybe possess them and live through their body, but also to be able to, I said, attach to their DNA and change their whole personality. It's really um, pretty um, extraordinary. Well, well, and they're they're bent on. See, in, in my belief, they want you to be down here. They want you to come down because, and this is coming from what they were saying. The demons want to be you so badly to possess you. They want. That's why they're like, no, stay down here, stay on Earth. You know what I mean? Like, we're not from here. Like, we're not from this planet. Like, I don't know, understand why people can't see that. Like, humans are half, yeah, our bodies are from here. But we're half mm -hmm. from some, like, obviously, we're, some, we're, we're another thing. Because, huh, I mean, we're using this Earth, but we're not meant to be here. If humans leave Earth, Earth is going to operate just fine. Something happened, whether, whether people want to call it aliens, angels, like, you know, whatever name they want to use. Something happened and came down, and we're here. And these spirits that are here, that are that are trying to control, manipulate us, and divide us, and but in politics and in everything, they're trying to uh, find this way to keep us down here because they know they're stuck here forever, and they're doomed to the eternal abyss, and they're doomed to hell. Uh, uh, and there's no judgment for the fallen. Like they're they're already done. They're and they're crying actually. Some people believe they're in, they're in Antarctica, bound by chains of copper, um, you know, but I don't know. But that's why, and I was saying this for a long time, they're like, no, love the environment. The environment, no, you know, put humanity back. You environmentalists don't even know you're being tricked. I know it's, it's good to love the, the, to be nice to the earth and everything, but and not pollute and everything. But I saw the spirit behind it, and they're trying to trick you to keep you here on earth so we can never actually fly past the stars and go to the next dimension of heaven or wherever you want to call it out of the solar system i think there's something outside of the solar system that no one understands system well let's connect connect what you said the the watchers they according to the bible they are chained up they're chained up in tartarus awaiting judgment but their offspring which is the nephilim they are the spirits the unclean spirits yes. that roam the earth looking for bodies to possess so the the fathers, the originators, they're, yes, they're chained up, but their children, they're, you know, they're roaming free. And it's, it's I tell, I, on, I was on another show and I tell them that mythology has a lot of truth to it. There's some truth to the Greek mythology, like when it says how the, the, the sons rose up against the fathers and it was a great war. That kind of, that's, that's kind of true. Um, they wanted to usurp their father's power. So these Nephilim, which is just means um, fallen, beings or giants nephilim is just the mixture or a hybrid part angel part human they were the ones who were um alive after the flood and they were the ones who were like i said still influencing people today people are doing stuff but there is all there's always some something or someone behind the scenes i tell somebody nothing happens by accident someone makes a decision somewhere someone somewhere and these beings, these demons, are able to control willing participants um, and be unsuspected at the time. I was just going to say about in the Theosophic Society, how Aleister Crowley summoned that, what was his, the, 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 the name of the, the, oh man, I forget, what was it? Lamb. Uh, Lamb. Yes, Lamb. yeah. But, uh, when he summoned him, those things... They, I, the, the spirits, according to the Pistis Sophia, which is, it's, a, it's a apocryphal text of Jesus talking to Mary Magdalene, that these mm. things are out there and they can look like anything. That's why if you go to the psychics and all that, that, that stuff, Jesus went into that realm when he transfigured himself. And he went into that, that well, I guess the Buddhists call it rainbow body when you're in Nirvana. Uh, but he went there and he was like turning the heads of these creatures to confuse them um and it, it's 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 all you know strange stuff 
uh, for the, the Gnostic people out there. Uh, but I mean, there's something about the Theosophic Society, how they're summoning these demons and doing these rituals that I believe these spirits can take on any form when they, when they visualize themselves to us, uh, when we summon them. And they can look like anything. They can look like aliens. They can look like any type, type of thing. That's a great point. They can look like aliens. They can look like a, a, a family member that's passed on. Yes. You know, they can imitate them. That's called familiar spirits with the word familiar family in there. Um, they can imitate um, some, someone, a person may have, yeah. They can imitate someone, a person may idolize or may have grown up idolizing. You're right. They can right. take on any form um, and they can fool you if you're not careful. Um, but there are ways that Alistair Crowley teaches that not only um, Hollywood, but anyone who wants to be successful um, and not use the Lord Jesus, that they follow his, his um, formula, how to conjure up demons. He tells them how to conjure them up. He tells them what kind of um, rituals to practice in order to conjure them up. And he, talk, he, he alludes to child molestation in some of his teachings um, of how to get um, power from innocence. So his teaching from these demons or devils um, are just rooted in satanic <laughs> theology and by people getting results and seeing actual supernatural beings manifest in their presence they're blown away by it and they um they, they think that um they're special but they're really not special they're really cursed that's really what's called over these demons don't care about us they want to be us and they, they can't because we're made above them and unfortunately, and, and uh, again, I was talking to uh, uh, Bishop, Larry, Bishop Larry Gators, and it's not, when they say racist, we're not race, like, yeah, well, you know what, maybe we are racist against this race of demons that are literally, that hate us. That's the, that's the race that we all should be getting together and saying, hey, it's not uh, like humans that are made to be bad and to do all these like these divisions and stuff like that. Those are the, why is no one pointing the finger at them? I don't like you know what I mean. Like like and it, it's so rare on TV to find people that talk about it. But now with all the pedophilia getting getting out, I mean, you can't deny it now. I mean, like Ghislaine Maxwell's in jail or she's under arrest, and everyone's like, oh, she's gonna get killed. But uh, these satanic rituals and pedophilia. They, that they don't exist, but I'm like, well, then who kill? Uh, who's killing her? Like, if they don't exist, who are these powerful people that are killing her? That we all know is going to probably happen. I mean, I hope, I hope it doesn't, and I hope they get all the info out of it. But. Wow, what a great point! That's wow, you are right on. I was on the show the other day, and I said that. I said the word racist. Um, they don't understand a definition. It's right. Like if the aliens come to this earth and we're against them then that's racist we're all of the same race the bible says we're all of one blood if we you and i get cut we're going to bleed the same blood that's red the aliens blood might not be red <laughs> See, that's it's a whole blue different, it's, we all know it's blue or whatever reptile the uh blood is I, I don't, but uh but yeah uh that i personally believe that that the devil was the one because we all when we speak in tongues that's God's language. That's the language that we're that we talk to to God naturally. That we were supposed to. It was almost supposed to be like a telekinetic thing where we would just say something, and you should see my discernment that you would understand what I was saying. That's how it was supposed to be, where we would just be like saying whatever. It would just come out, come out, and then we would talk to somebody, and they're like, oh, and then they were talking their term, and we would our our discernment was on psionically that we could pick it up. But now the devil was like, no, no, here's how you talk. I'm going to call it a uh, spelling, you know, and put a spell in your words and stuff like that. And so these, uh, th th that's why, th in my view, from what I read, that's why they call it racist. They don't call it uh, culturist, ethnicist, you know, they, they're calling it racist. Because they don't want, you know why? Because they don't want you to hate. The, the devil doesn't want you to know he exists. And they don't want you to hate them. And that's why they're like, uh, call it racist. So that way when we reveal ourselves, 
they'll all feel bad or something like that. Oh, it's the poor, but it's the demons that, you know, we're trying to enslave us for our entire uh, human existence. Don't hate them. You know, that's, that's what I think is going to happen. Can you speak a little tongue for us, Jim? Uh, well, let me uh, harness the spirit. Is this uh, kind of like... Uh, Eddie, it might be better than, no, than can me. You see the question? I just asked Jim if he could uh, speak a little tongue for us. No, Eddie, <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I'm not... I, look, it's a whole... I have to, like, be in prayer. I, I can't just come out. You know what I mean? Like, you have to really get... <laughs> I, well, you know what? I wish I could, but these spirits have me all over the place. It would be easy if I didn't have any. Yeah, I, I, I would be able to. Well, we'll, we'll at, by the end of the broadcast, maybe we'll, we'll pray and ask, ask the Holy Spirit to anoint you to be released to you tonight. So it's yeah. new and, and we'll buy no spirits. Um, yeah. But back to the, the, the your, your question. See, the Lord never looks at, never looked at color. He looked at nations. In the Bible, the word, the Greek word for nations is ethnos, where we get the word ethnicity. So the Bible in Genesis said that we were all, we, we, the whole earth was overspread with Noah and his three sons. So what does that say? That means you, I, we're all related. We're all family. And the devil does not want us to know that because it's power in unity. The spirit of the racism is just the spirit of division in disguise. That's all it is. It's really the spirit of division. And he uses racism as its um, biggest weapon to achieve his goal. But um, like you said, there really is no, we're all of one blood. We're all of one race. And we should be fighting against the powers that be. I'm not talking about the government. I'm talking about these principalities and powers that be. The spiritual wickedness in high places and the rulers of the darkness of this world. Um, I'm no, it's, it's hard for me to understand how people can believe that there are spirits that exist, but they don't believe the other part of what comes with it. It's hard for me to understand. You can believe one part, but not believe the other. It just doesn't make sense. And then you know why? So, such a, um, such a, go ahead. Yeah, well, 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 well here, <laughs> because uh, they don't, like, even the occult texts, when you read the Theosophic Society or uh, any of the esoteric stuff that's been hidden, when you read it, it's the same, like, when you read that, that's the, the fallen stuff, and yeah, this is how you get the, the, the keys of Solomon, and the testament of Solomon, and how he, and how he used the pentagram to, to control, the, well, the pentagram pointing upwards, he bound the spirits using the pentagram pointing up, upward, and this, it's water in like a leather, like, drinkable thing, and you, and you throw the water at the spirit, and then you put the, the curtain, like, it's almost like the Power, well, Power Rangers, that's why they like, like, like that, because <laughs> it, it, it's this whole spiritual thing. Uh, and when he held it, he could bind the spirits, and, the, and they would ask them, who, who binds you? And then the spirit would have to say, oh, Uriel, or whatever. If the people read, and, like, their names mm -hmm. are exactly the same as is the names in Enoch, it's the same names. Our business, these huge businesses and corporations are using these names. It's all the same stuff. And if they just read either one, read the demon text or read the God text, whatever one you want to read, it shows as clear as day. Wow. Okay. There's good and there's bad. I, 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 I see, you know what I mean? But no one wants to even hear about it. They think you're lying when everything came from there. Everything. No matter what you come up with, zombies came from there. Uh, vampires came from, everything came from there. Exactly. Werewolves, gargoyles, you name it. The, the sirens. Yeah, the sirens <laughs> and Enoch. Um, sirens? Yes. Yes, exactly. It all, it all, it all came from there. And I'll tell you, uh, not, not to get off my subject, but I'm going to tell you, uh, this is a true story. Um, spells are real. Um, you know, the word spell just means to put letters together to form a word. But when people, witches and Satanists, when they perform spells, they're real. They're not more powerful than the word of God or the power of God, but they are real. Um, many years ago, I had a dream um, about um, the people, on they were on top of the earth and the earth was black. I don't mean like black people. I mean like black, like this darkness. And they were walking like zombies, like they were under a trance or a spell, the whole earth. And I was trying to call them to come out of the spell, but they wouldn't listen. But then when they got to the edge of the earth, they fell to their death. Um, Later on, the earth, whole earth was full of people just under a trance or a spell, and they wouldn't snap out of it. And I couldn't understand why. 
It took me years to understand that dream and through studying and praying, I learned so much about that caused me to write the books about DNA, about angels, about Nephilim, about Freemasonry, the Illuminati, all that. But the whole point of the dream, not just to learn those things, but I found out, this is crazy, and you can Google this and find this out. In 1968, there was a witch by the name of Louise Hubner, H-U-E-B-N-E-R. And she was given a certificate with the county signature, the county supervisor's signature on it, ordaining her as the official witch of Los Angeles County. And to this day, she is the only official witch ever designated that title anywhere in the world. On the certificate, it said that she was given permission to cast a spell at the Hollywood Bowl on July 21st with her supernatural powers. Well, the time came for the, the spell to, to, to be cast. To this day, that's the largest spell cast that's ever taken place. 11,000 wow. people showed up. Um, yes, 11,000 people showed up. Um, not just that, she had participation from the Department of Water and Power, the Police Department, the Fire Department, Disney, um, Volkswagen, Bandy Camps, I mean, KTLA, um, Fox News, you, you name it, all these participants that came and donated, the LA Zoo, all participated, and she gave them chalk, she gave them candles, and she gave them garlic, and she had them draw circles around themselves, and they would sit in the middle of the circle, like a hexagram, like what we're talking about, and right. light this candle and repeat this spell. It was a sex spell. This is 1969. Now, what happened since then up until now? And, and it was at the Hollywood Bowl facing the Hollywood sign. The Hollywood sign is just another word for a magic wand. Since then, there's been pedophilia in Hollywood, rape, uh, um, homosexual, you name any sexual depravity you can name. And look what happened. Um, I'm, fast, I'm going ahead of myself, but the Lord showed me all this and instructed me how to break the spell two years ago. So I went on a Christian TV program, but I didn't try to go by myself. I wrote letters to 50 churches around Los Angeles County that have been joined with me. Not one church responded. So I went on myself to break this spell. The Lord had me go on a fast and I prayed, but then he had me burn the document on TV in 2018. Fast forward a year and a half later, and look at what's happening with Hollywood. What? Nothing. No movies. No okay. television. I'm hearing about arrests. And it's a direct con uh, direct result because of that spell being broken that nobody really knew about that was laying in, that was that was that that was sitting there dormant for 50 years. The Lord said, We're not gonna do not let this spell go past 50 years. So on the, the the day before the 50th anniversary, that's when I broke the spell. My brother, I'm 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 so grateful for it. Oh, but I've experienced plenty of retaliation and every tax from the spiritual world because of me breaking that spell. So it hasn't been a walk in the park, but seeing what I'm seeing now, think about it. There's been nothing new that's been made since January of this year. No new TV shows. No, no movie. Because that whole spirit of pedophilia and homosexuality lingered around this, around LA County and the world for almost 50 years. Isn't that crazy how powerful that is? Wow. And if you think about it, think about before. So that was in, you said 1960, right? That she did that spell? 1968. 68. Yeah. Well, think about TV back b before that. They were like, you know, now kids, did you say your prayers? Like they were like, you know, because God creates and Satan destroys, right? So God's like, yeah, here's the, you know, here's technology, you know, go, go do it, make something. Yeah, you know, let's. Let's act, and, and that's cool and everything. But ever since then, they started getting in with, oh, well, you know, maybe show some women a little more sexual. You know, yes. have, yes. them show their leg, have them show their legs first. Yes. Uh, maybe, you know, have them do kissing scenes. Yes. Uh, maybe have, and, 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 and my mom uh, told me this because uh, I'm, you know, I, I have a lot of friends, different a variety and diverse friends and everything. but. Uh, nowadays, well, before the whole Hollywood thing died, but but this is literally within the last two years, maybe may more than that. They're pushing like the gay thing where it's it's okay for guys to start making out, and all of a sudden, yeah, let's just show his butt. You know what? Let's just show him. You know, just like going to town and something. And like they're showing this on like on. I mean, yeah, it's on HBO and stuff like that, but 
they're still showing that as like something that used to be um, girls, but uh, guys and girls doing. Which my mom is is the greatest person ever because technically I'm not. I like okay yes if you show men and women having sex then yeah I get you know why wouldn't you have show men and men or women and women I get it it's you're free to do whatever you want but when I was younger my mom would always like when it was uh, uh, people kissing she would run up in front of the TV no Sonny <laughs> and she'd be like block it like that with her dress. Don't look, son. You know, and she yelled, "My dad, Louis, would you change the channel?" And and all, and this is this is for straight, you know, sex. And but so even that wasn't bad, even though it's straight, and you know, all people think, "Oh, you're straight, you're going to heaven." That means I'm gay. No, that doesn't mean anything. It's still sinful to look at straight people and doing it, or gay people, or whatever. So now, now the new thing is, well, you straight people got to be on TV showing your, your butt and your boobs. So now it's our turn. And I, you know, yeah, I, I'm sure. But like, either way, they're both not good. Um, exactly. So yeah, exactly. That, that's, so I, I, my mom was so amazing. And, and she's the one that, that prayed for me uh, to, to get, wow. to, and to, to do all this. I'm literally becoming her right now. But so you prayed. <laughs> so you, all right. How, first of all, how did you find this spell to to do this? Well, like I said, um, when I had the dream, it had been about maybe nine or eight or nine years, and I was still like wondering what because there was so many possibilities of what it could mean. So I kept asking the Lord, and He wouldn't tell me exactly what it means. Like just keep researching, keep studying. So as I was studying and researching and taking notes, one day I looked up something about California, and it led me to Los Angeles, and I stumbled upon the, what this website about. I don't know what, but it was about. Louise Hubert, the official witch. And I was like, let me look this up. And I looked it up and I was per perturbed by it. I was like, could this be true? And the Spirit of the Lord said, yes, it's true. Dig into it more. So I dug into it and I got to see, I saw what was going on. I saw, I mean, he opened it up to me like it was a, like it was a book. The, a month before the, the spell cast, Robert F. Kennedy was assassinated in Los Angeles. That was a ritual sacrifice for this spell to be, bro to be the, the groundwork for this spell, spell to happen. Amazing. Not only that, that same year, Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated, not in um, uh, L.A., but it's still, it's still America because she's officially known as not only the official witch of Los Angeles, but the official witch um, in the world. The cosmos is the word they use, the cosmos. That's pretty big. That's pretty major. And because of this spell cast, she went around touring to um, to colleges like the Ivy League schools, teaching them how to cast spells. She went to um, all around the world touring, um, giving conferences. She was on every major publication, a magazine at that time you could think of, newspaper. She went on TV shows, um, Johnny Carson. I mean, she was the popular thing. She, she was a, a bona fide sixth generation witch, and she was destined to cast that, that spell. And wow. just it's a mad, yeah. I, it's amazing when you look like what? What? She yeah, had I had a certificate. I was just reading her. Her husband was like a huge uh, deal in Hollywood. He was like a huge uh, art art designer for a lot of uh, major ma major movies and stuff. Yes, I just it's so much to get into with her. But how is that a, a coincidence? She had cast a spell at the Hollywood Bowl. If if you if you look at the Hollywood Bowl back in the day, it's almost like a a cauldron. On, on its side, half is in the ground and half is out. That's just how it looks to me. But there was a perfect place because when the people or, or, or the um, the audience is facing the stage, right above the stage is the Hollywood sign. And that's a wand. That's a magic wand. They used Hollywood to put a spell out on people as they watch it and indoctrinate them with what they see with the visions, you know? Even like you said, when um, like you said, when he was little, I was when I was little too. You weren't supposed to watch those sex scenes. They'll cover your eyes. Your parents will cover your eyes. So you not to watch it. But now they have drag queens and transgenders going to schools, kindergarten, and reading to kids. Now wait a minute. If they're children and they're not supposed to even thinking about sex or anything, why are you coming and giving them an option about how they can um, be with the same sex? It's all demonic and it's all these devils behind this whole. Um, agenda and they use hollywood they used hollywood but they use spells and curses to make these things go about that's why they practice those those rituals that they do with the, with the spirit cooking and the blood drinking and the cannibalism those are rich rituals to continue to get um 
the, the agenda of these devils um, on these earth through people. And they, they'll, give them, they'll give them fame and they'll give them notoriety and they'll give them money. But then when they're done with them, their end is going to be worse than it was when they were on earth. I, I, don't, I didn't know we were going to go this route, but that's just what I feel the Spirit is talking about. But because it's pretty amazing about this, about this witch. And, you know, I, I was pretty um, not I was concerned about trying to uh, um, attack this spell without, you know, any other support or any other uh, ministries. But he assured me that that's why he gave me the dream. So I had the the authority, the authority to do it. And like I said, I I thought not, I I believed I believed it was broken when I did it. But I thought nothing really happened. You know, I couldn't see it. I I didn't know what. But then now we're like 2020, and I mean I saw articles. The Hollywood Bowl cancels all its shows for the first time in its existence. I'm like, wait a minute. This has to be connected to this spell being broken. All of these Hollywood um movie stars, celebrities are not shows being canceled. I mean, think of this. This, this was the year and I just I have to believe that that spell had to be broken in order for um, not only pedophilia to be brought down but Hollywood to be brought down but this whole spell that this world is under that's amazing because like right now the the top Hollywood people are uh, you know okay, some people say that they're locked in their that they're on house arrest right now Tom Hanks Ellen DeGeneres Oprah all these people that were so funny and cool because they're like Hollywood magic, you know, yeah, you know, oh, you know, it's, it's all magical magic. And, you know, and, and I'm, uh, they're all, where are they? They're in they're. It sounds crazy, but no one's doing anything unless you're like low level people. They're just like, you know, they still have their podcasts on and everything or like they'll do something, but all the majors are, everything's very odd right now on what they're doing and and how they look even too yes they don't even yes. they don't look good anymore and i'm not saying because the makeup like we all know they're older and i mean yeah i mean like obviously i'm not we all age and uh it's tough but you know you they aged overnight but they, I'm aged saying, overnight. Yeah, they aged like 30 years and i don't know if it's, it's the adrenochrome that they're not <laughs> yes. in, in touch with anymore but I mean, come on, people, you know, we should know uh, the, the cannibal, well, that's what the Nephilim were, that's why we do that, is the spirit of cannibals uh, from uh, uh, the Canaanites that were worshipping Baal, which were the spirits, and they were, they wanted us, they ate people, the Nephilim, that's what they did, so that's why they're like, oh, you get superpowers when you eat from people, like that movie Ravenous with uh, Powers Boot, or was it Powers Boot? Or I forget, but yeah, like you'll get like super strong, like Jet Li in the one or something. Well, let me let me tell you something else. I don't know if you realize this, but um, we don't have time to get into this. But maybe if you ever have me back or something, we can talk about this because it's a whole nother show. But my second book talks about what happened in the Garden of Eden, and it's not what people think. It's not what we've been taught traditionally. It's not about a, a snake and an apple. It's not about that. It's nothing can be further from the truth. Just to um. Okay, you got to get forward. it. Yeah, just to fast forward, um, the Bible's clearly, um, Cain is not Adam's son. And there's a Genesis 5 genealogy where it's had Adam's, Adam's genealogy with all his, his offspring. Cain's not mentioned in it. But in Genesis 4, Cain has his own offspring where, where his offspring is mentioned. Cain is not the son of Adam. Um, like I said, we have, we have to get into it because I can you know, prove it with the scripture. I can prove it, but just have to, we don't have a lot of time. Okay, but here's what happened. When Cain killed Abel, from that premise that he is not um, Adam's son, but Abel is, he killed Abel because of that. See, Abel had the, the DNA of Adam and Eve. Cain, I don't believe, had the DNA of Adam. He had Eve DNA, but he also had the DNA of that serpent. So what he did was he killed Abel. Now, when I was reading, I read that story so many times, I was like, well, what happened to Abel's body? You don't see it anywhere. You don't see where... Where's Abel's body? Where's the body? Where? All we know is that he, the voice of his blood cried up from the ground. We're not even told he buried his body. The Lord showed me that Cain ate Abel. And that's where the term cannibal comes from. Cainable, cannibal. Cain ate Abel, not only to hide his crime, but to, like you said, to get his DNA inside of him so maybe God would accept him um, and that's where cannibalism started from. You're right, the Canaanites continued it, but the cannibal, 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 Cain ate Abel. That's wow. what I believe. Yeah, and that yeah, happened and, then. And the, 
if you've ever read any of the uh, Anuma uh, Elish, the, the, the Enoch and Enlil, and, or uh, Enki and Enlil, that whole alien story, I mean, there's so many texts that no one can translate, and there's so many versions of it. That's why, like, it's so hard to, like, because some say Enlil was good, Enki was bad, or, and then it's thrown around and it switched around yeah. because the, the tablets, they don't have, they're not continued, and they're not, like, there's so many different literal variations to it where you're just like, were they just making it up? But there are Sons of the Serpent belie- uh, people that are into this. They still do it right now, and they get tattoos and everything, so they look like serpents almost. That's why tattoos are that color, I think, because once you get a sleeve, right. like, don't you want to be cool and get a tattoo sleeve? And you're like, well, uh, oh, you're starting to look like a serpent now. You know what I mean? Because the serpents, oh, there you go, Case. Okay. You know, you always flex when you do that. <laughs> uh, but when you, and now there's anything wrong with getting tattoos. I and mean, they, look, they look awesome. You know, I, I, I'm a, you know, I, they look, I don't have any. Uh, but anyway, the sun, the, the, the serpent, they could, ex- when, however it happened, whether, the 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 the, peop, the the fallen angels tried to make their own race and blend with serpents. They that what Enlil and Enki said when God was creating man, that some of whatever the Elohim, or however you want to look at it, some of the God, the government of the Elohim, whatever you want to say, were trying to blend uh, to make people out of the serpent DNA because it took it better. Almost like that's why they say all throughout the Bible, wise uh, to be wise as a serpent. Because the serpent, because the reptiles, they could get that, how, whether they're sleeping with them or however they created this lizard people, the reptiles, they took it right away and, like, they just merged in with it. Because I guess human form mammals are harder to, like, re- were harder to replicate. That's why the reptiles were smart and cool and, like, slithering and, like, they just, they just blended right in almost. Um, and also you get that from X-Men. From Wolverine, mm, he right. healed. Remember how he got his adamantium? It's because yeah. he could heal. Look, nothing's new. They everything they get, it's already been re, it's already been redone in some way, and they're trying to make it in to make it look all cool. Don't you want to be like like cool like this? And and that's why Wolverine could get his claws in because he could keep healing. And reptiles and lizards, they grow their they can grow other limbs and stuff like or tails and stuff. That's wow. my own. That's, no, it made it, it's pretty closely connected to what the Bible says. Um, yeah. See, Cain, when he was told to leave, it says he went to the land of Nod. And he said that um, now I'm cursed from your face, from God's face. Now, if he's cursed from God's face, that means he had to go, I believe, underground. He went underground. That's where the whole underground thing comes from. Now, if you Google, um, LA Times reported, um, they, they did an excavation into the earth. And they reported and saw that if you put 5,000 years ago, lizard people lived in Los Angeles. If you Google that, you'll see they um, went under there and they, they found a, a civilization, a school, a pipeline. I mean, like people live under there. Some people believe they were like saying that they were lizard people, like not literal lizard people, but they were just like, um, you know, um, Native American. But somehow I don't, I don't believe that. 5,000 years ago. So... I don't, you know, they found some, some evidence of a of civilization living underground. So you're from, uh, are you in L.A. now? Oh, yeah, I'm, well, yes, I'm from Los Angeles, yes. I, I'm born and raised, and I, I think that's another reason why he gave me a, the authority to break that spell, because I was born and raised in Los Angeles. And right. What better, you know, place to do it? And like I said, it's, it's not, there's no bragging in this Um. At, Sometimes I kind of wish I hadn't a- attacked it because of <laughs> the um, attack and retaliation. But like I said, this this year has been um, pleasant to see Hollywood come down and that that's, there was some effect of that spell being broken. So I'm just thankful and give God all the glory for that. Um, you, we never would have thought, I know I never would have thought, maybe say two years ago, if you said, oh, there's going to be a time when all of Hollywood is shut down. There'll be no shows, no TV. Who would have believed that? Nobody would have believed that. But only, only God. Not just yeah. Hollywood. What about sports? Sports is on t- on TV too. A lot of Hollywood is infiltrated into sports. Anything that you see on television has been um, just <laughs> broken down. I believe God is trying to get people's attention. You know, look, I'm the one true God. You need to fo- put your focus on me. Um, everything that you've been watching has been um, perverted 
not just through um through through witches and witchcraft, but through evil spirits. You know, evil spirits they're not gonna come say, I'm an evil spirit. They're gonna use things on television and in the music to get your attention, things that you like, and then they're gonna push their agenda when they get you hooked. And that's what they do. Do you have uh, did you put this on YouTube? Your like, is that what you had to do? You had to televise it? Um, well, see, I, what I did was there was a, 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 a Christian television station called Cross TV. And how I got connected with it, it's like once only God, someone told me about it and said, you know what, um, I read your book. You, you should, like, I told them about the spell that I, I wanted to break. And they said, you should try to go on this show and, um, you know, break the spell. And I said, hmm. So I, you know, I contacted them and I found out you just can't go on a TV show. They wanted you to pay some money. Um, but I thought it would be uh, an investment into the kingdom. So I paid the money to go on the show, um, to introduce the book. Um, something happened when they put me on the wrong time, God again. So they gave me another um, portion of time on another day to come back. So I came back the next week, which was a, a couple of days before the, the anniversary of the spell. And I was able to break it. So I had a show, I, I bought a shofar, never blew the shofar before. So I, do the shofar on, on there to break the spell, which it kind of sounded like I was struggling because I didn't even know how to blue one, but I got one good one out. But like the Lord was telling me, that's the struggle. That's 50 years of demonic of Nephilim spirits walking through Hollywood. It's, it's, not, a, it's not something that's going to be easy to break. And I went on there. Um, I addressed the spell. I fasted and prayed for um, six days, not, no food, just, just water and praying and fasting. And I took the, I printed the document, the official document that she had, and I took a, um, um, a lighter and I burnt it. I burnt it up on TV and called the spell broken. And then I just put it out. And then, like I said, just went, finished the show and went on about my business. Nothing else, you know, I, I, my spirit, I knew it was broken, but I didn't see, I was hoping to see the next day, Hollywood goes down or, you know, <laughs> Hollywood is over. I didn't see it. So I just went on about my business and we'll see well, a year and a half later, now we're seeing what's happening. Like, and I'm like, wow, wow, it was amazing. And even like I said, when I didn't see anything happen, I even thought, well, what was the purpose? I attacked that curse and that spell, and I'm, these witches and devils are fighting me and attacking me, but attacking me. There must have been something to it. But like I said, now I see what's happening. I, I couldn't be more um, happy that the Lord picked me and chose me. And I'd do it over a thousand times again if he asked me to and take all, all the attacks that come with it. You know, uh, two, two things. You know, it's interesting you said about sports, too, because – a lot of those NBA athletes, I mean, look at their tattoos and their symbols that they have all over the place. So everyone got hit on the visual stimulation of what television is. Um, yes. And I, I want to ask you, like, I love, like, I like church. I'm not against churches. Like, I, 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 I play guitar at church. Like, I, I love it. Um, I, uh, it's interesting that they didn't want to come back you up, right? What I'm saying is, all right, how, how can I say this without sounding crazy? Did you feel that this was a demonic attack on you to actually have to cast a spell? You know what I mean? Because I, I want the churches were probably like, because some of these churches, they don't even talk about the real stuff in the Bible uh, right. and the actual spiritual warfare. They just talk like it's all glitter and lights and hot chicks in the front row and you're playing guitar. And like, it, it's, it's like a bit, it's like a ritual in a way. But. Mm -hmm. What, you know, did you feel when you had this come to you to cast a spell on you? Obviously, I know your discernment was right on point, but did you feel like this? It like it's not of like is it in the Bible? You know what I mean? Like should I be doing breaking spell? You know what I mean? Because like breaking spells is one thing, but I I personally think that when you're called to do something, that God needs you to do something, and when He talks to you, He's like, okay, yeah, you know what? Maybe you're gonna have to use a pentagram. And you're going to, look, this one time, I need you to do this, uh, whatever you had to do. And it's not like you're dabbling in dark arts or anything because he probably needs you to, you know what I mean? I would feel a lot of Christians and, and spiritual people would feel scared to do that because they, maybe there could be a chance of demon possession or, uh, you know what I mean? Like, uh, am I really doing the, the, the right thing that God would want? But with what pastors know, man, and what they w should know about Hollywood, I would be like, dude, use my church, you know, come on in. Like, you know, we'll, we'll have like a, I, I don't, you know, that's why I'm not, uh, these new churches are just, they're, they're all fallen. Not all of them, but. Most, most. No, you're right on. We, and I have to tell the truth. I'm not going to, I mean, not going to sugarcoat that. Um, 
I, I, and I'll send you a copy of the letter. It was very sincere. It wasn't, I wasn't, wasn't offering to take the lead. Whoever, you know, I know there's some big name pastors out here. I just said, let's just all join together. We have children. We have family. We have loved ones in, this, in Los Angeles. Um, we want to stop the, the, what's going on with the sex spell and the curses. We want to break this. Let's join together. You know, I think now in hindsight that I was intended to break it by myself the whole time, but the Lord wanted to make sure there was no pride in me. So he had me send those letters out as a form of humility, just to say, okay, here, you, you guys can take, take the lead or just let's join with me. He wanted to see if I was going to be able to um, be humble about it. And I guess I passed the test by doing it. What I, and I, I think by him giving me the dream, that was the confidence that I needed to assure, to assure me that I could break this spell. So I, I needed to find out what my weapons were biblically to break the spell. And like you said, prayer and fasting was one of the weapons. Another weapon was using the blood of Jesus. Um, there's nothing more powerful than the blood of Jesus. So while I was fasting, I also took communion, communion, which is taking the blood of Jesus. And not only those two things, but also the name of Jesus. There is no name that is above his name. So with those weapons at my disposal, I was ready to attack this spell. And the final confidence that I needed was in Exodus chapter 22, verse 18. And it says, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Now, on the surface, it makes you think of the Salem trials, right? Or if you should kill witches. But when I looked up what it actually meant in the Strongs, it's saying you shall not allow a witch's spell to continue. <gasps> what? Yeah. That's I mean, well, who wouldn't think? Because, like, you know, everyone, uh, G well, they thought Jesus was a witch. Like, the whole witch burning people, that's opposite. That wasn't like, well, I mean, it, it, to, to, the, to the discerned mind, it's not like the people that, that actually knew the word and had a relationship with God. They were like, oh, we shouldn't kill her. You know, we should let her do, you know, what, whatever. But like, because cause some people, they might just be uh, feeling God. And, and they're like, okay, kill her. That was the same people that are right now that like hate you for telling people what a sin is. You know what I mean? They're like, right. oh. You think it's a, it's a sin to be gay? Well, it's not me saying this. It's in here. It's you know in here. I I'm not gonna just Man. say. It's like saying, oh no, lying, lying's cool. You know what? So is thieving. Being a lying thief. It's, uh, let's have a parade about it. Let's, let's be proud about it. Exactly. I was talking about the, that the other day I, um, on another show, and the, the person was pretty combative, and he was. Saying, well, you know, I don't know why you're so against homosexuality. I said, let me break it down for you. I said, sin is sin. Yes, lying is a sin, murder is sin, homosexuality is a sin. But there's something about homosexuality that God has a very big problem with. Not only do you have the first flood in Genesis 1, 1, and 1, 2 that we haven't talked about, Lucifer's flood. Then he flooded the whole Noah, the earth with Noah. Then he rained down fire and brimstone for Sodom and Gomorrah. And we are told that there was homosexuality going on there. But not only that, there is no other sin, but there is a movement, a march. People aren't marching around for murderers. People aren't marching around for thieves. People aren't marching around for adulterers. They're marching for gay pride. He said, well, what's wrong with them having equal rights? Maybe, you know, if you would, if you, maybe you could join them. And I said, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says for us to separate ourselves from sin. Um, you know, I'm not going to stand and march with them because I'm, I mean, I'm condoning their sin. You know, there's something about that particular sin that just is a, it's in a, it's a stench yeah. in the nostrils of God. And I'm sorry if people, if that hurts their feeling or steps on their toes, but they need to read their Bible and see his reaction to it. Um, it's, it's the slap in his face because he made man and woman, male and female, to reproduce. That's the whole point of it. If, he, if it was just man and man, there's no reproduction. There'll be, just, there'll be no one on the earth. So it's slapping him in the face and it's just saying that you don't know what you did. You made me a man and I shouldn't be a woman or you made me a woman, I should be a man. So slap in the face of God. And that's one thing that um, God is not going to accept is the, the um, corruption of his image and then just mocking him. God will not be mocked. Yeah, um, I, uh, my, 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 my thoughts on it were, I mean, I, like, look, I love everybody. Like, we all struggle with sin. I mean, I struggle with, I know my, you know what I mean? Like, the, yes, we're all born with our, with whatever sin we have, uh, for yeah. sure. And, yeah. and, and that's why, you know, people are like, oh, well, they're born. Yeah. I mean, they, 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 they are, they are born, born with it. Um, or whatever, however, maybe some are, maybe some aren't, I don't know. But I, I think we all struggle with the sin 
and I know it's hard because it's just like me. It's be like me struggling with, you know, women and I'm single. They're around places gathering. But anyway, but you know, they, I like, I get it. It's, it's so hard. And I'll probably, I, 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 I want to say, Jim, I'll never sin again. Not even once. I won't even, you know, touch it. You know, uh, but I probably will. Uh, and so that, like, it's the same way as I don't want to be proud of being like, hey, you know what I did today? I, I spanked my, my Italian sausage four times and it was great. And I didn't, you know, no, because when you save that in, okay, I'm just going to talk about when you save your precious manly mojo in, it makes you actually better if you don't uh, do that for a while. And there's this, these monks that like played around with stuff. Uh, it like you can the connection that you get people it's a kundalini that some people say but also it can be used in bad ways too but it's kind of like the dark arts in a way but it you're you get even scientifically your endorphins you don't get if you as a guy can go two weeks without having an orgasm you have the same level of dopamine in your system that makes you feel amazing that lets you just look at the at the grass and and like a beautiful scenery and that is all you need to be happy but we're told no you should you should beat off like at least twice a day or you know or whatever they want to say Who if you, say you that? That <laughs> as a guy for two weeks if you if you just try so your dopamine levels build up so much and then all of a sudden you're like you're like just more peaceful you could look at a, a mountaintop and like and that would like shake you as much as you know, uh, you're at the gym and some girl's, you know, wearing those butt pants or something and you're just looking and, you know, struggling with, and then you start to get all the other sins that come in. You get mad at it because you're looking at this, this bulbous and you're like, oh, she probably has a boyfriend. He's, he probably can't bench, you know, and like all of a sudden all the other sins start coming in. And so, yeah, I, what I'm saying is I get it. We all sin. We all struggle with it. This is America. You can do what you want. But I'm saying, I think it's better to promote the best thing, like, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to try to talk about the best you can do. Try right. to promote that. Because even yeah. if we could just go a little better, that, that's great and a little less sinning. And then don't, don't push that on kids. Let them grow up their own, make their own. Don't push that on them. Like I said, we right. don't have that push that pushed on us. Oh, and, I mean, don't that's push a whole, that on yeah. them. That's a whole, you know? yeah, we, we should do that in the next episode for sure. Yes, no, no that's question. That's George. Well, why? Well, uh, Eddie and uh, man, it was. This is groundbreaking what you just said. How you basically uh, just destroyed Hollywood. Well, the evil parts of Hollywood. I mean, we all love movies and action heroes and stuff, but uh, that's crazy. Um, how God talked to you and you humbly did it. It's almost like you I'm want me to. I'm getting chills right now while you're talking about it. I'm getting chills right now but, while you're talking well, about it. It's, you know, it's I, say, I said this before on, 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 a show, on the show a few times. Moses had a speaking problem. And when he was supposed to free the slaves, he couldn't talk that well, right? And I'm not trying to make you sound any less than you are. But, I, but if I was in your situation, I'd be like, this can't be me. You know what I mean? Like, uh, what, why was I, why am I, you know, it'd be like doing something that you don't think you're ready for at all because god said you're going to tell all the jews that you're going to save them and and you're going to get the uh, uh, uh save them from slavery and he's like well why don't you get aaron my brother he he's such a great talker and he's like hey everyone yeah trust me okay I, he probably had cool hair and he was probably like you know a great uh, he was a great public speaker <laughs> and god right. was like god said do you question the the one that put your tongue in your mouth what he asks you to do because Moses, Moses wasn't confident and uh, he wasn't confident in his ability and so like that's why in your position that's such a heavy burden not a burden but that's heavy you know what I mean I did wonder why you know that's why it maybe took so long for the interpretation of the dreams I did wonder why he picked me um you know much many more renowned people famous um I know, you know, the things that I've been through in my life. I just wonder, you know, I did wonder. It was a, uh, I questioned it. And like I said, it just, it took a lot of, a lot of prayer and a lot of confirmation. And, you know, I just, whenever I would learn more stuff about her, and he, even, even today, I, I haven't really told anybody 
you know, besides you know, my parents know and Bishop Gators knows, but I haven't gone on any um, forum and told the story about that. And I'm just, and I gave you guys a drive-by version, but because I just thought the Lord just led me to, to say it tonight um, because it's, like I said, it's not, nothing that I, I'm bragging about because go, going through this, what happened from then until this year, I, I can't label the, uh, many attacks and my, the t many times I thought to myself, I should I should just left that spell alone. <laughs> I should not have addressed address that spell but um eventually i got over it and i just and he, and he assured me that you did a good thing you did the right thing so um there was a he showed me a scripture in, in ecclesiastes i'm trying to find it but it says that there was a i'm not claiming that i'm poor but it said there was a poor man that saved the whole city and no one remembered his remembered him he showed me that before i checked i was like wow he said now are you prepared to do this without getting any kind of recognition or um any fame i said yes yes so I think it was, it was, he had to make sure my heart, my heart was right. And when your heart is right, the, the, the devils and the witches and the Satan's kingdom are no match for the Jesus and the God that's in us, no match at all. And that's why it was, it was defeated. Now, um, like I said, I, I, I still was, I would not, and I was also sad when I didn't get any responses from those churches. I really wanted, you know, you know, let's join together. I couldn't understand, but to me back to what I've learned about Freemasonry, Illuminati, many of the preachers out here are that way. Um, so of course they're not gonna want to address it. They they probably are on the same side of it secretly, which is why they didn't. Um, but I sent to the big churches, small churches, um, churches of notoriety, churches of small notoriety, you name it, just 50, over fifty, the ones that he specifically asked me to send them to. Churches I had attended over the years when I was young, many of them, but not even one response. And it, it surprised me, but I, like I said, I saw that it was a test to make sure that I wasn't going to be, oh, look, yeah, I brought this curse down, I brought the spell down, eh, which is nothing to be, you know, that that world, that dark art, that dark world is nothing to be playing around with. That's that's it's a serious thing, and um, they, they they do retaliate. But like I said, seeing what's happening, seeing this, like I said, I've never Hollywood Bowl canceled all shows for the first time ever. That's I mean, that's just incredible to me. And um, even the fact that Hollywood is down, I don't think Hollywood is ever going to come back the same. Never going to be the same. They're going to try to do it. Never. It's going to be totally changed. Totally. Completely changed. Whatever movies have been made before now, that's going to be probably the only ones. I don't know how they're going to do it, but it's not going to be the same. God yeah. has break, broken that down. And as long maybe, as... Go ahead. Yeah, maybe they, maybe they won't be a, a, a feminist brainwashing films anymore or like... Uh, uh, you know, just pu pushing politics on you constantly, constantly. Believe this. Believe this side. Don't worry about this. But then in 20 years, okay, now believe this side. You know, I mean, they're always just like cha forcing something on us. And uh, I don't, don't want to cut you off, but real quickly, the Bible says that one could put a thousand to flight and two could put 10,000 to flight. That was my my thinking in getting these joining this church. And the Lord used we just one person to do that. What could He have done with all of us? What much more could He have done? Not just with um, the country, but the world. Because like I said, that spell went out. The whole world watches Hollywood. That spell went out over the world. It's like when you watch Hollywood, it just goes out. It's like it's, it's like a it's like a spell. No matter right. what part of the world you're in. So, I, I was I, I was reading something on. I, I was I forget who I was listening to. It might have been Mark Passy or somebody. Uh, it, it was a spiritual. Uh, podcast on on uh, on our energy output, and mm -hmm. that if we come oh and uh, merging hemi sinking our left and right brain to try to be uh, basically use both of your brain instead of just one or the other trying to put them together and they and they were talking about how our our like energy on a spiritual realm uh, what could actually fill up an entire continent of just one per so like yeah like just how you said. Uh, and I think uh, there's also a post that was telling me about it. Hey, you don't have any energy to go to the gym today because you work for eight hours. Just remember <laughs> our output. Like, I forget how it proves it's science in a scientific way, but it was all these new age people talking about our spiritual energy. They're saying we have the, the output of, so of this like gigantic, like earth wide thing for just one person. So when you said I believe that. me as one person could do this, but I'll, uh, you know, I definitely believe that. But again, when you brought up how the poor man is going to do something to, to change an entire nation, uh, you know, I'm going to love God no matter what. So 
if I make a ton of money, I'm still going to love God. If I make no money, I'm still going to, you know what I mean? And I had this whole thing come to me about pastors. And if you've ever gone to church, to a lot of churches, they always have guys come up and on their church. They always have hot wives and like beautiful <laughs> families and their picture. And they're always like, hey, you know, this guy became so successful. We're going to have him talk about his sermon of why, of how God affected his life, right? And that's awesome. Like, hey, I'm, if, you, if God needs you to be prosperous for something, great. Awesome. Yeah, I'm for that. Why can't they have a guy? I'm not saying I'm poor, but, you know, I, I'm a musician. Uh, so why can't? And I was like, hey, why don't you have a guy that tells people about his walk with the Lord that can live off of $18,000 a year? But, like, I'm still... Like, either way, I'm going to love God. Like, here's why I love God, and I don't even have anything to prove to, to show for it. Because God's not my sugar daddy. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, don't, I don't, you know, yeah, does he make me happy? Yes. Does he give me blessings? Yes. Does he pr give me, you know, stuff to take care of me? Yeah. But if he doesn't give me any of that, I'm still going to be like, him. hey, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I often wonder that. I'm like, why? Like, I wonder why these big things, they don't have a, a time where like, hey, yeah, we're going to give you the prosperity stuff, but we're also going to give you the guys that still love God and they don't, they, their car breaks down every, you know, three months or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, and they're, maybe they're not married because, you know, uh, they're meeting the wrong women. And they're like, I don't know. But uh, I, I always wanted to, to I, I just thought about that. Um, but okay. Uh, so we've had you all do It's been over an hour and I love every second of this. This has been breaking. Before I, 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 I want to make sure I get, I, I found the verse that says that about the poor man. If you want me to give it to you, real, just real yeah. quick. Yeah. Um, I'll read it's Ecclesiastes chapter nine, verses fourteen and fifteen, um, and it is comparing what, what what happened with me. It says there was a little city, and few men within it, and there came a great king against it, and besieged it, and built great bulwarks against it. Now there was found in it a poor, wise man, and he, by his wisdom, delivered the city. Yet no man remembered that same poor man. That's what he gave me. He says, that's, you, I want to make sure that you, you're doing this for the right reasons. Can you do this and not get any notoriety for it? And I said, yes, Lord. He says, okay, then we, we have, I can work with you then. That was, that was the whole thing. Because if he has one of these big name preachers doing it, there would be bragging and put it on their website about how they broke this spell and how they're this and that and that and this and it never would it would it would never have been broken. He needed a, a sincere, um, repentant, um, fasted, praying person who um, had no um, desire for fame, no desire for notoriety, just wanted to see people, um, children, families saved from a spell that was over them and broken so they can um, be free to hopefully not only come to Jesus, but just to um, be free from the oppression of the demons and the devils of the whole sex thing. Cause everything um, is rooted in the sex nowadays. So yeah. I'm just very humble for that. And I, I thank you for the opportunity to be able to say, like I said, this is the first, you're the first, first show. I talked about it on, on Bishop Gators when I was on a, his first just show a few months ago, but I didn't go into detail like, like this and say it like this, but, Thank you for the opportunity. I think the Holy Spirit had a moment um, reserved for us to talk about this. So I believe some people might be, it might be, might open their eyes and they can go research and find out about this with the seat. They can be shot like, wow, that's crazy. Wow, it really did happen. That's what I'm hoping for. So thank you. And um, I thank you. And, and, and Kay, is it Casey? Yes. You're thank Kay? you, sir. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. For having and me we'd on. love to have you on again to talk about your other book, like you had mentioned earlier. I would love to. Um, hopefully, um, your audience will tune in for that because that's going to have their mouth on the floor and find out what happened in the Garden of Eden. It's crazy. Oh, it's really? like a, Please, it's like a, let's do it. Like a movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, yes. so I, I was explaining to Jim earlier. Sorry, I, I don't say a lot during these uh, episodes. I'm just taking it all in. I'm learning about all this as we go. It's, I'm not. I'm not as ingrained as you guys are. You know, I'm aware of you. I like your, I like your disposition. You laid back, and I can tell that you're observing everything and, and I'm taking it in. So, no, it's, it's all good. So, Jim Jim always has a question for our guests before we close the show. So, go ahead, Jim. Yeah, um, uh, to just, you know, uh, something to, to take away for the audience, as my, as my dad would say, you know, something to put in your pocket for, for listeners and viewers. Uh, what can you uh, – what can you – what's your blessing to, to people or – 
uh, what, what do you need them to hear from all, all that we talked about? Or what, what, do you, what do you feel that God needs, you know, to, to a, a, a good word of scripture or advice or, or something uh, that someone could put in their pocket and then take out next week and be like, oh, yeah. Ecclesiastes, stop being so vague. Uh, it's such a great <laughs> book. You know, Solomon was so amazing. Like, I mean, he was smart, man. Uh, I mean, he wasn't like the best, but he was, you know, he definitely got wisdom. And uh, that's, that's a great book for anyone that wants to be humbled in a way where you're too uh, pr uh, proud. Yes. Um, thank you for that opportunity. I, I do want to, I always want to end with some good news and um, I'm going to get one to give a verse, but the good news is, um, no matter what's going on, you always have a refuge in Jesus. If, you, if you're if a believer and you're saved and you believe what the word says, you always have a refuge. In him. And there's no need for anyone to be scared. Um, the Bible says we do not have the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. So no matter what you hear on the, on the news, which I tell people, don't, don't watch the mainstream media because it's just, gonna, it's just a bunch of lies. But no matter what you hear on the news, no matter what you hear on, on um, through rumor or through out in the street, um, God is still a God that saves. And God is still a God that takes care, that takes care of his people. Um, also, um, all this um, oppression that's going on or people being thinking that they're oppressed, the only person that can counter that oppression is the Lord Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. And I want to read this one verse just to show this point. It's Ecclesiastes again, chapter 4, verse 1. It says, so I returned and considered all the oppressions that are done under the sun and behold the tears of such as were oppressed and they had no comforter and on the side of their oppressors there was power but they had no comforter who was the comforter the bible says the comforter is the holy ghost now if you have the comforter then that is the counter for the power of the supposed oppression you need to have comfort because not it's not just saying okay if it's going to be okay we pat you on the back no the comfort comes with power and solutions and tells you how you can solve the problem so anyone out there who does not know the holy spirit you can simply ask him to come fill you if you're saved because you have to have jesus in your heart first but you can simply ask the holy spirit the comforter to come there's no formula it's simple you know holy spirit can you just come and live in my body live in my life through jesus and he'll do it. And then you'll be surprised how much comfort he can bring to situations through your mind, through your spirit. And those comforts bring solutions and answers. So that would be my word, I guess, for today. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. Um, and remember the feeling of two things. When you said about the, the oppressors had no comfort and neither did the oppressed, the oppressed, right? Well, so the oppressors had power. Look at it, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. like everyone's you know without jesus like however you want to look at it whether you work for someone or you run a business or whatever you want to look at it uh without jesus you, you, you're going to be screwed and amen what's the first sign of demonic possession is oppression that's the first that's the number <laughs> one sign as soon as you feel oppressed that is that every priest knows that they're like this they're like uh what's what what are you feeling and like something's like ruling over me and the, the feeling of, of oppression is the first sign of demon possession so uh that that's is a great you, you, you tied that together expertly that's a great point we've been talking about the, that's a great oh you, that was expert the way you tied that together that's that is true that's that's a great point i like that oh i like that i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to tweet that if you don't mind i like that <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right yeah uh Eddie, and so uh tell why don't you tell our our, our viewers and listeners um about your uh where they can get your book and where they can find you online um on twitter instagram facebook whatever uh websites okay you, if you want to follow me on twitter you can go to at etienne memo um e-t-i-e-n-n-e-m-e-m-o at etienne memo on facebook is facebook.com forward slash just my first and last name etienne graves um if you want to purchase any of the books or all of them you can go to amazon.com forward slash author forward slash Etienne Graves, my first and last name. Um, and I also have a PayPal if anyone wants to donate or donate to the ministry or to um, me doing my research. Um, I, I'm welcome to it and God will bless you for it. But, you know, if not, you're still going to be blessed anyway, either way. And it's paypal.me forward slash capital E-G 
memo. That's paypal.me forward slash capital E-G memo, M-E-M-O. And I'm working on the website and I also have a YouTube channel, but they can get all that from the, from the on Twitter or the Facebook. Awesome. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. And I, I will uh, be getting in touch with you to schedule again in the next couple of weeks. I would love to come back. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you, guys. I had a great time. This, this was fun. You Thank too. you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Be blessed. Uh, God bless. Bye. Okay. All right. Bye.